A hero is simply somebody who does what nobody else is willing to step out and do. So you're a hero this morning in, in Food Lovers Market. God bless you. And, and Jesus is our hero for going to the cross, doing what none of us could do. Even if we wanted to, we could not have done what Jesus did. And, um, you know, actually it's, it's all kind of, I can see why maybe I was feeling to talk about what we're going to talk about today, which is Jesus as our ballast. And I just want to hit kind of a couple different things. Just, you know, I have a screw here. And, you know, you can have a part, something here that really works really well. And, but if it's meant to be held together to another part over here, you know, but that screw is not in place, that can be working really well, but then it's going to vibrate and it's going to fall off and, you know what I'm saying? It's not, it's not. If it was meant to be a part of something else, you, you need this thing. <laughs> Told it together, and every part is very important to, as a whole, to fulfill, to run well. And, you know, sometimes, um, when we talk about growing up into the fullness of Christ, we're talking about not just one thing. We're talking about Jesus and, and living in him, with him, in relationship. And it, it was funny, I mean, this morning <laughs> as well, I was just kind of felt, you know, the Lord, you know, saying, you know, I love you, son. And immediately I was thinking about, you know, all the things I want to do for the Lord. <laughs> And he just reminded me, and he just said, no, 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 it's not because of what you do. So it's interesting you share that this morning as well. He says, I love you because you're my son. Not because of what you do, um, but because of the love that we share. It's, it's an outflow. What you do is an outflow of this love and relationship we have. You know, so... Um, God's love for us is total and complete and deep and wide. I mean, Romans 8, it talks about, you know, the depth and the, what, nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. And he loves us right now totally and completely regardless of the things we do. Now, he, he wants us to <laughs> obviously do the right things and walk in his footsteps, and he's there, and we can have that experiential intimacy even greater as we do because we're walking with him and in him. But God, God's love for us is so complete and so total, and it's, it's right now. It's not when you achieve this or later and that or anything. It's right now, a total, complete love, and that is the basis and the ballast of our life for Jesus. If we don't understand that, but we can be good in certain areas and things and do and even walking in power and, and all these things, but yet something's not going to be right experientially. You know, it's, it's, it's going to feel like, you know how the, the tightrope walkers, they have that long pole? It, it's, it's, it's the ballast. It's, it's what keeps them steady. So a little fault there, whatever, doesn't really matter because that long ballast is still keeping you balance. You know what I'm saying? And, and Jesus is our ballast. I mean, in him is completeness, is life as we are living in relationship with him and as we are, you know, loving him with all our heart and, and loving our neighbor as ourself. But it, it, it is that reality of relationship which causes everything else. And um, so I actually wanted to look at some different, different aspects of this. Um, and, you know, start right in Ephesians 3. So if you have your Bible, you can turn with me there. Uh, Ephesians 3. 
Because, you know, Jesus... We're sons and daughters of the king, okay? We're part of his family. And, you know, as Amanda was sharing in the beginning as well, you know, family is meant to portray the, the, the ultimate bond of relationship, you know? The, the, um, and so we're not trying to perform. We're not trying to achieve. We're, we're, we're living out life because of this love relationship we have with God and with each other as our family. And um, anyway, let's go to Ephesians 3 verse 8. To me who am less than the least of all saints, this is Apostle Paul speaking, this grace was given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery. So right there we have a fellowship. Which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God who created all things through Jesus Christ to the intention that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places. So our very lives are a, uh, a making known of the manifold wisdom of God because he makes it known by and through the church, the body of Christ, that's us. So every time we do step out, um, we're making the manifold wisdom of God known to people according to the eternal purpose which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in him. Therefore, I ask you not to lose heart at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. It's a family. The whole family in heaven and earth is named. You see, we're part of a family, God's family. We have one Father. And Jesus said, who are my mother, who are my brethren, who's my family? those who do the will of my Father because it's an outflow of the relationship that we have with Jesus and each other. So we need to understand, you know, this is the reality. We're, we're part of the family of God. And specifically, God is putting together a family here. You know, and it's th those who are living this out, walking this out, which is kind of the, you know, um, Greater love has no man than this, than a man lay down his life for his friends. You know, there's this aspect of what would you do for you, your family? You know, how, how do you treat them? How do you, what kind of relationship? Well, we're God's family. And so it's that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that you being rooted and grounded in love so as we walk in faith God is, is dwelling there and moving with us and may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge. Okay, here is the love of Christ passes knowledge. Knowledge is important. We need to know how to step out in faith and how to do things. But the love of Christ is our ballast. The relationship that we share and the active love that we share with him, loving him and our, and our neighbor as ourself. And um, by this all men shall know that you are my disciples because of the love that they have one for another. So this relationship expressed through love with each other, those who are walking the walk together, is by this they, people will know that we're the family of God. So being rooted and grounded in love, you may be able to comprehend, okay, to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. If we don't 
if we haven't said that our love, the, the relationship, our first love relationship with Jesus is the beating heart of what causes us to do what we do and everything is not an outflow of that, then we'll feel off kilter. We may be doing things, good things and powerful things, but we'll, it, we'll feel something's not right. You know what I'm saying? There's more. You know what I'm saying? So the love of Christ must be the beating heart of our life, our intentions, and it's not a work, it, it is a relationship. It is a yielding of one to another as, as a man and a woman who become one. It, it is a giving of yourself and the two become one. And it is a, the relationship between Christ and the church. So it says to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. So without knowing the love of Christ and, and having establishing that relationship as the core of what we do in him, with him, because of him, then we will never grow up into the fullness of Christ. He, he must be our ballast. The love of Christ must be our motivation. The love of Christ. Uh, because everything else, you can falter, you can fail, you can be growing in areas, and that's all okay. If the love of Christ is our motivation, we will keep progressing we will keep moving forward in all of these things. But if we don't have the love of Christ as our motivation, as our ballast, as a relationship, no matter how good you become in all these other things, it means nothing in regards to the relationship that God wants to have with us. Because this is of primary importance. Everything, all of these other things should be there. But... Jesus must be the reason for it all. Jesus must be the center of it all, as the song that we sing. We must. Um, otherwise, we're involved in religion. And religion is hard. <laughs> religion is hard. And it's not, it's not God's intention to put it, a bunch of burdens and rules that we go through and we feel like, you know, but if, if we're doing what we do because of the ballast of Jesus and, and the first love relationship that we share and have set and established, this is it, then all of these things will be in their perspective. They will be a facet of our journey, but our ballast and our surety is Christ and Christ alone. And nothing can separate us from his love. We can't work for it. We can't earn it. We can't deserve it. We can't, none of that. It's there. Because he, loved, because he first loved us. We love him because he first loved us. No, we can't earn it, deserve it. He's not asking for that. He's saying, I love you. Let's walk this out together now and learn and grow into him in all things. <clears throat> so we must know the love of Christ when we talk about growing into the fullness of Christ. So um, this first little topic here in, in the, the ballast, Jesus our ballast, is um, the ballast of wholeness, the ballast of fullness, um, the fullness of Christ, his love and, and experiencing the wholeness of Christ. So now to him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. So that's a nice promise right there. He can do above what you're even thinking right now. So, you see, the love of Christ surpasses knowledge. Your knowledge may go here and operate to there, but the love and intimacy, the, the, the ballast of Jesus Christ, the, the love of Christ, the relationship that you would share will cause in that situation this to happen because you're not limiting by knowledge. You're walking in relationship, the love of Christ, and expecting the unexpected because your Father can. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And wants to. So he can do above and beyond all, all that we ask or think according to the power, his power that works in us. To him be the glory in the church. Where is his glory? In the church. And we glorify him by walking with him, trusting in him, and stepping out with him. To him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, chapter 4, verse 1, as a prisoner of the Lord, 
to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long-suffering, bearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body, one Spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of all, who is above all, through all, and in you all. To each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Now this ascended, what does it mean? But that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth. He who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens that he might fill all things. And he gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. For, we should be able to, to by memory, <laughs> say this verse pretty soon, if not already. For the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, until we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge that Jesus walked in, the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect or complete or mature person, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So now, it is God who puts these offices within the church. And, you know, we, we do not. We, our focus is Jesus. It's not one facet of our life and walk with God. Jesus represents completion, wholeness, a mature, spirit-filled, well, he was a man when he walked on earth. So how a, a person filled and is living in maturity with our Father should walk. So now, we will be in this family, we'll be talking about all these different things. Um, you know, the DNA from the apostle, the DNA from the prophet, the, the, the evangelist, the pastors and teachers, all of this we want to come out because we want to walk in the fullness of Christ, not just one aspect. Um, we want to let God bring us to that place of maturity and completion in Him. And so, you know, we will be looking at... Um, different aspects of this a as we go along. Um, even, you know, there's, we were talking recently about dreams and visions and, and, and understanding and, and um, how God speaks to us through these things and directly to us and how to understand them. And, you know, Daniel was somebody whom God used, you know, in, in that way, for example. And it's an important part. All of these things are different aspects how God speaks to us, how God work, works with us. Jesus speaking to the woman by the well, you know, showing her, him things about her that she, he didn't, Jesus didn't know in the flesh, but Father revealed it, just like that. We want to be walking in, in the fullness of Christ. And so we'll be looking at all these things as we go, as we go on. So when we understand that we are to grow up into Christ in all things, then it, we're, we're seeing a proper perspective of Jesus as our ballast. You know, so it is, every area is important. And so walking in faith in the power of God is important. Walking, understanding, hearing from God is important. Um, you know, all, all these different things are relationships. So we, we want to look at the whole picture of Jesus Christ and who he is and walk with him in that way. So then there is like the ballast of understanding that we're in God's family. All of, each one of these things helps us to keep the right focus and walking in the right direction. Because, because we are to be walking in the fullness of Christ, which is not lopsided and it's not... Um, you know, raised up on one side and lower down on the other and you're walking down the road like that. It is, it is walking in the maturity of Christ and representing him in his completion and fullness. And everyone here as part of God's family has something to contribute.
towards that. There is unique things that God has put within you and that you have to contribute to the whole body working together. And that's going to be another topic down here lower about, um, no, it's right now, the ballast of family, God's family. And so um, in First Peter 1, verse 3, it says, It is his boundless mercy that has given us the privilege of being born again so that we are now members of God's own family. We're not employees. We're not carpet cleaners <laughs> for God. We're family. Okay, as the example <laughs> in the beginning. We are in God's family. We need to let that sink in. We need to realize, even if we mess up on something, our Father still loves us as much as he did before we messed up. <laughs> Even if we're growing and, and learning to walk in a certain area in him, his love for us is not, well, I'll love you when you learn that. No, his love is complete and entire. And he encourages us in whatever thing we're, we're, we're learning at the time and growing up into him. So we need to really understand this aspect of God's family. And even in this fellowship, we, we're a, a part, you know, a, a specific part of God's family as well, but we are family. And so we need to... You know, a family that um, interacts and is, is really a family. <laughs> you know, we're not just uh, spectators coming on a, on a Sunday. That's why, you know, the life teams and, and, the, and the home groups are really, it's really where things happen and things can grow because it's about relationship. It's about walking a road together. It's about connecting and being able to help one another iron sharpening iron and, and all of this type of interaction. And so Jesus with his disciples, that's, that's what he demonstrated. He, he reached the world. Last Sunday we talked about, you know, you know, if one person reaches and disciples one person in one year. One person reaches one person and disciples them one year. And then the following year, those two are reaching out to another one each. So they're reaching two. And, we, and if that were to continue every year, in 34 years, 8.5 billion people would be reached, which is more than the population of the earth. So now that alone, that's what Jesus did. That's what he started things out as. He poured himself into 12. So he didn't do one, he did 12. That, that jumped things <laughs> right from the beginning. And his intention, you know, his, you know, there were multitudes that followed him and there were all these, you know, but Jesus had 12 that they journeyed together. They, he said he appointed 12 to be with him. Okay. So now each one of us, as I mentioned last time, can be pouring into somebody. Even if you think about one person, you know, in a year. That's not too, like, far away or something like that, but... It does, please don't limit it to that, you know. But, you know, if we reach out like that, God's purposes will be established. And that's the way to do it. It's, it's, it is good, you know, to, you know, we gather like this. And, and it's important. Some people feel awkward to come to a home the first time and all that kind of thing. But, you know, Jesus interacted with 12. And then they went on to change the world. The reason we are Christians is because of what Jesus did with his 12. Any Christians in the world, they're, they're believers because of what Jesus did with his 12. So, you know, let us not be tempted to think that, okay, I don't see 5,000 people sitting here yet <laughs> or something like that. But if we are a core, a family of believers, we can really change the world if we implement and, we're, and we take it seriously and reach out. If it's to one or however many you can. But if we're faithful to do that, the impact as it goes on will be multiplied tremendously. Remember, you know, that if, 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 if a person reaches two people in, what was that, 24 years, that's 10.5 billion people reached more than the population in 24 years. So it's easy to see Jesus his intentions were that this world was already reached. 
that we would already be in heaven if there was not a, a breakage of God's intention um, when, so we're supposed to be sharing and reaching out. So, but, okay, we are a family and we're bringing people into family. God our Father being there for one another. And you, you need to know people to be there for one another. You know what I'm saying? And so that is God's heart. That's God's intention. And so we can do a tremendous a lot in Him if we seriously walk this out together. <clears throat> okay. Um, Romans 8. Verse 14. It says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. I mean, we were talking about during the DHT how to be filled with the Spirit. You know, you can be filled with anger, you can be filled with a sentiment, and it causes a reaction. So to be filled with the Spirit is simply to, to be, allow Him to influence us to the point of action can be his word, it can be his, you know, and so if he influences us to the point of action, he is filling us and, and we are being led by the Spirit, by his word, by his Spirit. As many as are led by the Spirit, these are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. Uh, I'll read it in a different translation here. It says, The Spirit makes you God's children, and by the Spirit's power we cry out to God, Father, my Father. God's Spirit joins Himself to our spirits to declare that we are God's children. This is family. This is relationship. And this is our life in Him. Walking with Him in relationship. It's not a relationship of fear, you know, or... or um, of bondage again to fear in verse 15 you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear so this is not religion this is not performance what we do is, is an outflow of relationship and love so you've not received the spirit of bondage to fear but the spirit of adoption by which we cry out Abba Father and if we are children then we are heirs heirs of God not stuff that he has. We're heirs of him. Him. We walk in relationship with him and everything we has, like, you know, going in and the chops are on the stove and all that kind of thing. <laughs> it's all there. It's all part of being family, you know. Um, but our inheritance is him. What greater, you know, and the two becoming one. What God has joined together, let no man separate. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. In us, the glory. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. So our Father allowed all the earth and creation to be subjected under the curse in the hope that one day we will come back to him through Christ and thus establish his purposes and reverse all those works of the devil that have been done and as family now begin to change things and make it like God intended from day one. He subjected it he allowed all of the creation to be subjected in hope. So God, our Father, has put his hope in us, his children, to live and walk with him in this love relationship and then to allow what we do to be a reflection of that. <clears throat> so it's not, it's not bondage, religion. It is relationship and acting accordingly as an outflow of relationship. The whole creation groans and labors with birth pains until now. Not only that, but we who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves, eagerly awaiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. So we're still in the flesh here. So there will come a day when even that is, is set aside. And we're going to 
enter into our eternal body. But for now, we're here. God is our Father, and, and uh, we walk with him by faith. Um, what verse was I at here? Da -da -da -da. So we were saved in this hope, but a hope that is seen is not hope. Why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait with perseverance. Faith, hope, and love, these three. The greatest is love, but, it, but it, at the end of 1 Corinthians 13, it says abide in all three of these. Faith, hope, love. Faith and hope means there's certain things you haven't seen yet, but the hope which is founded on God is sure, but you still haven't seen it yet, but you know it's coming. So abide, faith, hope, and love. The greatest is love. <clears throat> Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself, God himself, makes intercession, prayer, for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. So, it's so important. Take those times, pray in the Spirit, pray in tongues, fellowship with the Lord, in a, and keep going into the depths of intimacy and relationship with him so that the very groanings and the very that no words are coming out but it's there it's the spirit himself making intercession for us his body and through us with which gro with groanings that cannot be uttered now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. So all things work together for those who love God. Okay, because often somebody will say, somebody had a car accident or something, well, God can, you know, well. <laughs> for those who love God, God can turn anything for, and for good. We know that all things, no, for him, for whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn of many brethren. There we have again, family, brethren, brethren with Jesus. Jesus, our brother. He's our God, he's our king, he's our savior, but he's our brother also because we have one father. He, there is the relationship. Jesus who came in the flesh, who came as a man, set aside the God and became as we are so that we can be as he is. Uh, we are to be conformed to, the, to, the, to his likeness, to his fullness, to his completion, conformed to the image of his son, the firstborn of many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, who did he predestine? He predestined that all who receive Jesus would be on this path to be conformed to the image of his son, those he also called. Who did he call? He called everybody who received Jesus, that category. Those who received Jesus, he has predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. And those whom he has predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, th that category of people, he has called. And those whom he has called, he has justified. Christ is our justification. That and these he also glorified. All right. So it's family, the firstborn of many brethren. It's not religion. It's family. We walk in him. We live in him. <clears throat> so the um, John 3, 27. Oh, let me go from there. Matthew, four, uh, Matthew 12, verse 48, it says, And he answered and said to them, Who is my mother and who are my brothers? He stretched out his hand towards his disciples and said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. So as we journey together, we can see who's our family. You know, who's part of the family that God has, has put us together with. So now there's this aspect of walking together as a family, which is also a ballast. So we're talking about the ballast of Jesus. So there's that ballast of wholeness. We don't, we don't get lopsided. We look at all of whom he is. 
and we walk in his fullness. And there's this ballast of, of family. We need one another. Iron sharpens iron. Everybody has something to contribute. The body which uh, is edified by which every part supplies. That means if somebody's not there, there's something missing. You know, there's something that will be not complete as far as, as God's intentions. And so walking this journey together is also a ballast. It is a, because there's all times when, you know, we, we need each other. And, and so Hebrews 10, verse 19, Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he consecrated for us through the veil, that is, his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart, in full assurance of faith. Having, why, why can we have a, a true heart with full assurance of faith coming to him? Because we're family. You don't need to worry with family. You're, you can put your feet on the table. You can <laughs> eat together. You can take the chops off the stove. It's your, your family, okay? You don't need to be walking on a, because we understand we're, we're family, okay? And having a high priest, uh, sorry, okay, so, by a new and living way which he made for us through the veil, that is his flesh, having a high priest over the house of God. Okay. Let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our heart sprinkled from an evil conscience. How do we have our heart sprinkled from an evil conscience? By walking with our Father and doing his intentions. Then our conscience is not going to bother us. Man, I wish I would have done that. Because we're, we're, we're doers of his intentions, which is his word that flows because of relationship. So our conscience is not going to bother us. And that's the place we want to walk in. We want to walk in the place of our heart is, um, uh, where was I there? Our hearts are sprinkled from an evil conscience. Because, and our bodies are washed with pure water, the water of the word. His word, his pure word cleanses us. And so then we live in him and by his word and so our hearts are sprinkled from an evil conscience because we're living his word we're doing his word out of relationship and as an outflow growth is fine but let us be doers <laughs> let us be doers who are growing up into him in all things we're, then we're on the right track and we will make progress into him in all things let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering for he who promised is faithful he is faithful, but we've got to put one foot in front of the other and keep going. The only thing God can't help with is if we don't keep one foot in front of the other and keep going. If we, oh man, just, Jesus taught this prayer of the unjust judge and the, the, the widow who went to him that people ought always to pray and not lose heart. There is so much to be said for the overcomers. Those in Revelation, it talks about to him who overcomes and lists all these things. Because the ones who keep going with God are the ones who will see the fruit of God's intentions being birthed in this world and in our own lives. But he just needs us, our cooperation, set aside the fears, set aside the worries, looking unto Jesus as we grow up into him in all things and keep walking, keep going forward. And let us, and that's why it says, and let us consider one another in order how to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another and so much more as you see the day approaching. You see, that's the ballast of a family. We need each other. We need the, um, to, to encourage and to stir up one another to love and good works, to live out our destiny in Christ. It takes, it takes a team. It takes a family. And that's God's intention. One big family. Every, uh, people who are born again are birthed into his family. It's a family. And so we, we need to live this out as a family. <clears throat> so assembling together and exhorting one another to love and good works. And now there's the, the ballast of simplicity. Okay? God did not intend to make our spiritual journey with him complicated. It's not meant to be complicated. It's 2 Corinthians 11, verse 2 through, 4, 2 through 4. It says, 
Paul is speaking to the Corinthians. He says, I'm jealous for you with a godly jealousy because I have betrothed you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear lest somehow as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, so your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he who comes preaches another Jesus whom we have not preached, or if you receive a different spirit which you have not received, or a different gospel which you have not accepted, you may well put up with it. So Paul is encouraging them here. There is a simplicity in Christ. If it's complicated, it's probably religion. If it's all this stuff that, you know, and, and, and you're feeling raised up on one side and it's not a wholeness and, it, and it's like they're preaching another Jesus and it's kind of a religion and it's kind of this thing and it's got some truth in it but it's a little bit, you know, that's the other Jesus he's talking about which is not the gospel. There is a simplicity in Christ and it's walking in first love relationship with him, loving him with all and loving those around it, loving our neighbors, ourselves, and journeying with him as we walk in the fullness and maturity of Christ, growing up into him in all things. That includes walking in the power of God. That includes walking in the love of God, the character and nature of God, the journeying together as a family, that ballast of having one another near to iron sharpen iron and the DNA, the divine nature attributes that each one has to contribute, the things that God has helped them with and sharing with one another. That's how God's family grows. Family grows by multiplying the family. It's not a... You, you can't... Mm. Jesus said, who's my mother, who's my brother, who's all, those who do the will of my father. So that's, we need to be aware. Our reaching out to one person and bringing them in and, and helping disciple them, that's where it's at. That's it. That's how Jesus changed the world with his disciples. It's not because he uh, just held big rallies and, you know, fed 5,000 with loaves and fishes. I mean, that, in fact, he was trying to get rid of people who were following for the wrong reasons. But he found those who understood that it's all about loving the Lord and journeying with him. And all these other things are, are not what it's about. It's about everything flows from that first love relationship with him. So there is a simplicity. And when we understand the simplicity of our relationship with Jesus and letting things flow from that intimacy, then it brings a peace and it brings a rest. And it's not a fear-based performance thing. It brings a peace and it brings a rest. The steadfast of mind you will keep in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon on thee. It says in the Proverbs. Matthew eleven twenty five says, At that time Jesus answered and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and the prudent and have revealed them to babes. He's referring to his disciples as babes. So there's a simplicity. Babes aren't complicated. Children are not complicated. You've got to explain it very simply and succinctly to a child. It was Albert Einstein even said, he said, if you can't explain it to a small child, you don't know it, what you're talking about. You must be able to boil it down to simplicity. And <clears throat> even so, Father, for it seemed good in your sight. All things have been delivered to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, nor does anyone know the Father except the Son and the one to whom the Son wills to reveal him. So Jesus has willed to reveal his Father to you. That's why you're part of his family and you're born again walking with him. It was God's will that you walk with him and he reached out to you and you came. And here we are with him walking together. Come to me all you who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and lowly in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. There may be some, you know, until we lay our life down and enter into the simplicity of Christ in relationship and letting things flow from there, it, it's, our yoke is not easy, nor is our burden light. It, because it's religion. It's performance-oriented 
Now, God is all for us being effective. That's why he came. He didn't come so we could be ineffective. He came so that we could represent him in his effectiveness, his authority, his power, his love, his character, his nature, all of that. But it is through taking his yoke. So the yoke is what was on the oxen and through the thing that they pulled. So there is a yoke. There is a mission to be accomplished. There is a world to be won. There are disciples who are not yet disciples who need to be reached. But Jesus' yoke is easy and his burden is light. So if we are doing it out of relationship and love, he will be right there with us as we are on this mission and we're not going to be feeling the brunt of it even though I'm not saying not to journey hard, work hard, I mean missionaries in foreign fields and, and even here, you know, we can live a life where we're busy for the Lord but it's not busyness. It is doing what we're doing in Him and through Him and in relationship with Him as an outflow. So we just have to, you can do the same thing but you can do it as an outflow with him or you can be trying to do it yourself. You know what I mean? So I'm not saying not to do these things, but I'm saying let's do it with Jesus. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Not me over here, Jesus over here, but through him, in him, as I abide in him, trust in him, walk in him. So come to me you're, if you're burdened and heavy laden, I will give you rest. Become like a little child. A little child looks to father and trusts and walks, walks forward. Hebrews 4.10 says, He who has entered his rest has himself also ceased from his works as God did from his. So we're ceasing from our own works and we're entering into the works of Christ because we're doing it with him and in him. It's just a matter of our intentions. Jesus, I'm oh, doing this with you, in you. And you do it. And you go forward with him. Um, Isaiah? No, read that. Okay. I'll just close with this as last uh, soon. The ballast of faith. Okay. So we were talking about the, um, the ballast of Jesus, which is wholeness. Okay. Uh, the ballast of being a family, which provides a ballast. And the ballast of simplicity. And, uh, and the ballast, I just want to talk about faith here. There could be more things here, but that's all we have time for today. But the ballast of faith. 1 John 4.18 says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. So the love of Christ is our ballast. As we love him, there is no fear in him. Because we're focused on him, we're walking with him, so it's, it's not a fear of failure, a fear of this, a fear of that. We're just going forward with our Father in simplicity, without second guessing, because we're as babes, as a child, looking to our Father. He said, yep, yeah, you do that, okay, let's go, let's do this. You know what I'm saying? And we're not focused on the, f the, f the fears of this or that and the other. We're just walking with our Father and proceeding. And um, so faith dispels fear. When we truly are walking with faith in our Father, it dispels fears. I'll just close with this in Ephesians 6, um, where it talks about the armor of God. We need to make sure we're walking with his armor. Ephesians 6, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So God has destined us to be strong in his power, in his might. Okay, so it's not something we, through faith, we walk forward. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. The devil is busy. He's active. He's reaching out. He's making disciples as fast and as furiously as he can. God is looking to us as his body to be reaching out on his behalf here. 
So it is up to us to get in motion with him, in him, and through him. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. So if we want to stand and we want to be strong, we need the whole armor of God, not a piece there. I've got my elbow protected there. Okay, but bam, you know, what about the rest? And so it's not just one thing. We're talking about a wholeness, the ballast of maturity, completion, and everything whom Christ is. <clears throat> therefore, stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth. So the knowledge of God, the truth of God, protects us. Having put on the breastplate of righteousness, he became sin that we become the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 31, it says, Jesus has become to us sanctification, righteousness. He's become everything to us. As our faith is in him, he is our righteousness. We become the righteousness of God in him. And having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You're ready to be instant, in season, out of season, to be a witness for the Lord, to be his body, to be reaching out like Jesus. <clears throat> and above all, it's interesting, it says, and above all. So this is very important. <laughs> above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. We must walk by faith and not by sight. That's all there is to it. Faith, hope, and love, these three. Faith involves things you haven't seen come to pass yet, but you know they will because your father told you so, and he created the universe. There you go. Okay. The shield of faith will keep you moving forward. You drop that shield of faith, you get one of the fiery darts in the neck, and you're not going to feel like going anywhere. You're not going to feel like going forward. You need to keep the shield of faith up knowing Father is faithful. He's omnipotent, omniscient, all-powerful, created all things. He told you something and you're going to believe it and you're going to keep going forward, extinguishing all the fiery darts of the, of the wicked one. And take the helmet of salvation. Remember, sozo, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Salvation is not just in one area. It's a complete salvation. Body, soul, and spirit. Luke 10, 19 and nothing shall by any means hurt you. I give you authority over all the ability of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. But you must be walking in the full armor of God with the shield of faith raised high. Take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. So we must use. God's Word must be used and must be set in motion. A sword sitting by your side in the day and moment of battle is not going to be very helpful. You've got to pick it up. You've got to thrust it right where it needs to go. <clears throat> and not haphazardly, just like, uh, you walk around like that, somebody can just kind of knock it from your hand. You, my father said this. Whoosh, you put it right where it needs to go. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. So you're walking in God, you're fellowshipping with Him, you're communing with Him all the time, at all times. He is where your mind is. You're, you're dwelling with Him. He's your paradigm. He's your focus. With all prayer and supplication, being watchful to this end with all perseverance. Perseverance is key. One foot in front of the other. You keep going. <clears throat> if you're on a journey somewhere, you're not going to get there unless you keep going. If you stop, you won't get to your destination. Simple as that. <clears throat> Being watchful with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints, walking as a family, praying for one another. Okay, let's, how can I help? How can you help? How can we walk together in this? And for me, that utterance may be given to me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to. So we should be speaking boldly as representatives of the kingdom of heaven, walking as a family. So Jesus is our ballast, and that includes wholeness and completion, the fullness of who he is, yeah, the ballast of family, a team, working together, walking together. We're a spiritual family. We have one father. The ballast of simplicity, 
not letting things get complicated. There is information and, and things we can talk about and discuss, but it all comes down to Jesus, his life. What did he do? What is his intention for us? The same thing, the same works and greater, the, this, this first love, this intimacy. It, it, it's simplicity, Jesus. I'm the way. What's the way forward? Jesus said, I'm the way. I don't understand. I am the truth. How do I live this out? I am the life. Jesus needs to be the center of it all. He needs to be our all in all. He needs to be the reason, the motivation, the heart, and the one whom we're looking to in faith as we keep one footed of the, in front of the other. So we will be listed in those overcomers who are listed in Revelation. To him who overcomes, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. I will grant him to sit with me on my throne as I have also overcome and sat with my father on his throne. He who overcomes, I will write on him a new name which no one knows except him. A name especially for you written on you from Jesus. Okay, so Father, we thank you so much that... You are complete, you are whole, and you want to bring us into your completion and wholeness and maturity as a, as a representative of you. Help us to not overly complicate things, but to see that this is, that you want us to walk in simplicity. As a little child in faith, as a, as a child doesn't overcomplicate things, but simply looks to Father and, and believes and walks forward. Help us to walk this way so that we can live free, so that we can live in peace, so that we can exude your boldness, your confidence, your peace, because we don't get our peace derived from what we visually see. We get our peace from you in whom we believe and in whom we live. And then the situations around us begin to conform to who you are because we're exuding your life. Help us to walk by faith which, and to walk by you and not by sight so that others may see and be drawn to you because you are lifted up and you are the one to whom we are looking and so you are the one whom people will see through our actions and through how we live. So I just pray that this week we will just have a, a real revelation of the, this simplicity and this first love relationship and so that we can let you be our ballast so that whatever storms may come, doesn't matter. You're our ballast and you keep us balanced. You keep us walking forward in simplicity, in faith, and in love. Amen. Amen. So God bless you and uh, let's walk forward as a family. In Jesus' name. Amen.